Oh, I'm so glad it's actually decent out today. It's uh, nice enough to actually be outside for a change. What's going on, Nabooers? There's so many things to say today for an update and show you stuff. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, <laughs> so let's start with um, a bunch of improvements and optimizations I've been doing to Cloud CPM and also Nabulib and any of the games that or software that's built on it, including Telnet. So the last week, um, I was done pretty much everything that I needed to get done for Nabulib to the extent that it was working and you can make software with it. So I thought to myself, well, it's time to start optimizing, right? So first thing I did is this little machine has a hard time keeping up with the baud rate. The baud rate is hard coded based upon the, um, the clock speed, which is 3.5 megahertz, and there's a flip-flop that divides that in half, and then that feeds the TR11, which um, you divide that baud rate by 16, and that's what you get, or that clock rate by 16, and that's what you get. So that's why we have 100 and whatever it is um, baud rate. Everyone seems to have different numbers, but I can tell you what the real number is. There we go here. So baud rate is 111,861, okay? So that number comes from the 3.5 seven blah, blah, blah hertz crystal divided by two from the flip-flop divided by 16 for the TR8 or TR18 not TR11 TR18 data sheet so one of the things that I was doing before is I had an interrupt during file transfer that would try to buffer the information now the trouble is is that I originally thought Z80 instructions were um, anywhere between like four and five six cycles per instruction turns out they're much higher. You're looking into like the 14 to 18 instru uh, cycles per instruction. So it's very expensive. You only have um, a couple, like 200 or so cycles between bytes, which means you need to have everything done with like f less than 10, essentially, around 10 or maybe f 15 instructions. So the, the interrupt takes a ton of cycles because it has to stop everything, it has to jump, then you have to clear the interrupt and you have to back up a bunch of stack. It's expensive. Um, so I now in the file transfer, anything that does reads, executes this DI interrupt, uh, focus interrupt, and then after it's done, does a restore interrupt. So it'll focus interrupt on just the RX and Therefore, it's not an interrupt, it is just watching the RX bits. And then when you scroll down and take a look at something that I'm doing, like for example, um, opening a file, if you take a look at Nabulib, you can see this uh, file store here. I disable the interrupts by focusing and then I restore those interrupts at the end. Other things I had to do too to optimize is the Z88 compiler, generally when you're um, assembling a 32-bit uh, variable, you would OR and sh bit shift everything over. Now, when you look at the assembler that it was creating, it was actually pretty expensive. It was uh, recreating every single time, um, every for every single instance of a variable that you were sh bit shifting into the uh, the main variable area, it was creating 32-bit values, it was doing a ton of stuff, it was really expensive. So I ended up realizing that, hey, this makes more sense. So I just create a, an array of eight bits, and then I just cast that array to a 32-bit variable. So that makes the assembler what I would have written, which is just take um, the IY register, throw it into, take the stack value, throw it into IY, increment each uh, the stack, boom, 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 and then return that as a, as a pointer. So that created some really nice um, assembler for us. And then other things I did in here as well is, uh, not just in here, but throughout all of Nabulib, is rather than using arrays, I'm just taking the, the buffer and using a pointer and then just looping through and incrementing. Okay, so that's way quicker than doing for loops. So these little modifications, are saving, you know, maybe four uh, instructions or six instructions here, or maybe 10 instructions in some cases, right? But the, the thing to realize is that when you're doing these file commands, these are running 
many, 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 many times. So that four or five instructions turns into a hundred cycles and then a hundred cycles multiplied by running this thing um, on a loop, maybe reading some data for a picture or reading some, to get some resources or load some files from cloud CPM. That ends up becoming thousands of cycles you're saving in very small periods of time, like one or two seconds. So for example, when I DIR in CPM, um, the return that we got back that quick is because the enhancements. Something else I want to show you that I did, which I thought was pretty clever. Um, the CPM BIOS size is around 14K. It's pretty small and it does a ton, right? I mean, we have virtual 80 scrolling, we have um, sound, we have uh, remote file systems. There's so much in here, okay? And we still have, out of our 64K, 52K free. And that's including um, all of the caching, all of the disk caching, and including the font. And that's why I thought what I did was kind of clever because, well, let's go back. Let's take a quick look at user area three. Now let's look at Hitchhiker's Guide. Ha! And this is what I'm excited about. Look, inverted characters, right? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so, why I thought this was kind of, kind of a genius on my part was I was, go I was looking at the pattern file that has my font in it, okay? And I have this little font editor where I can create all these, these patterns. And I started adding extra characters but it just grew and grew and grew the binary for the BIOS and it made it so big and I was, it was double the size essentially because you have 766, uh, 776 bytes just for the, the system font that we have, okay? So you have to multiply that by two, you end up at 1.4K. That increases in, in the entire um, BIOS by 1.4K and it removes that 1.4K from applications. So what I did is inside of our, uh, let's see, BIOS lib here. Uh, let's see, where are we? Right here, inverse character set. So I load the character set here, the original one. And then when I'm done loading it, right after I just continue on in, in, in memory, in the VDP memory, and I take the, um, the data that we just had and I invert it, right? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So we end up with an inverted character set in VDP RAM, but it didn't require any BIOS memory other than this little tiny loop here. Oh my gosh, okay, what next? Well, here's something that's good too, is in Nabulib, we now have scrolling up and down. Scrolling up has changed significantly. It's uh, way more optimized. It's incredibly fast now compared to what it was. And now we have a scroll down, which is really cool because we can scroll not just text, but we can also do scrolling games um, that use tiles in the background. And this will work with graphic modes as well. So be prepared for me to come up with a scrolling game to show you how that works. I'm pretty excited. Oh gosh, and then what did I do? Well, inside of um, File Store, I created a new bunch of functions for TCP. So you can do TCP clients now and you can actually read and write TCP as if it's a stream, which means you can have the internet adapter buffer all of the TCP data and then this can, your, your NABU program can just read and write to that stream as necessary. So the old version of TCP that we used for Telnet would um, be a, essentially, um, it would just pipe everything from the internet adapter right into the NABU and everything from the NABU right into the internet adapter out to the internet. And that consumed a lot of CPU and data on the NABU. So now the NABU can offload data and only request what it needs from the, uh, the internet adapter. So that has resulted in us having a better Telnet client. So if you just load up this Telnet program that is the new one. You see here now from the command line, we can enter in where we want to telnet to. In this case, we'll just telnet to
our local machine here. And this Telnet has really great emulation, so we can even do things like run IRC. Um, you can run Nano. It's got uh, you run Emacs on it. It's uh, virtual 80 columns as well. So that's fantastic. So eventually I'm gonna port um, RetroNet chat to an IRC client. I'll probably do that pretty soon. Okay, let's get out of here. Yes, 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 lots of disclaimer. And then disconnects and returns us back to our command prompt. Cool. For testing all the performance and everything, one of the applications that I've been using is the slideshow, which I have added a ton of new images to. And of course, these are images that are personal to me and things that I find, um, I guess, reminds me of being a child, right? So I have like A-Team and Elf, bunch of Canadian content on here as well. Uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, of course. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, we'll just bounce through a few of these for you. Yeah, there's a team. Right of course, Aeon Flux, one of my favorite movies. And Agent 99, right? And of course, you got Airwolf. I mean, Airwolf, and then you had, there was a, I think there was a Canadian version of Airwolf too. It was called like Blue Thunder or something. An Alien, of course. A movie that scared me as a child. One of my also favorite movies in high school, Hackers. Angelina Jolie. Computer I grew up with, the Apple II. One more thing before we jump into the, the MSX games. There's also um, help tutorial added to Cloud CPM. So for those of you who are not familiar with command line and you're just getting into the NABU and you want to know what CPM is all about, you can just type in help and you can walk through a quick little slideshow that will explain to you how CPM works and what the origin of CPM is, how you navigate through folders, etc. So I'll let you explore through the help to familiar, familiarize yourself with, uh, with CPM. Now where we're gonna go to next is Air, user area number eight because we're gonna jump into MSX games. Huge special thanks to Lewis. Uh, I'll drop his YouTube channel in my comments, but he has successfully ported most of the MSX BIOS to load onto the NABU. And I can make another video in the future to explain a little bit more about how that works, what the MSX BIOS is, why it's uh, compatible with the NABU, and then how Lewis was able to make this happen. Now there are some difficulties with the way the keyboard maps uh, differently than the MSX. Now the MSX, as Lewis says, was the gamer's dream keyboard. It's a matrix and it allowed multiple, multiple key presses where the NABU keyboard being serial based, it's a little bit more compl complicated to read from, specifically the way the MSX BIOS works. But again, this is not the video for that. So we'll get into that in a, in a future video. But you'll see here, these are a bunch of ROM files. These ROM files are MSX games. Now these are the ones that uh, Lewis has already verified all work. Now, how it's gonna work is you're gonna type in MSX ROM, which is the BIOS loader. And then you wanna type in the game. In this case, we're gonna load up Goonies. So make sure you type in the full name with the .rom extension. Now, some games require interrupt mode two and some require interrupt mode one. So if the game doesn't work the first time, add a, well, first time just MSX Goonies and don't put anything on the end and then the game may lock up. If it locks up, reset the computer, come back and do it again, but this time put a two on the end. This will inform the MSX ROM that is gonna be in interrupt mode two. You'll see a little bit about that here. So now Goonies should load in Cloud CPM. And there we have it. So there's a whole bunch of games in that folder or in that user area. And this is something interesting too. I did not know this was a version of Goonies. I'm only familiar with the one that was on the C64 and the Apple II. So this one's kind of interesting. It has the same music as the original. And it's a little different in the sense that you are single player, 
you can punch things, you can climb up and grab, and I'm trying to play with one hand, this is always fun. Oh, didn't see that happening. Come here, you. Punch ya. Oh, it's hard to play with one hand. I'll let you guys do it with two hands. Ugh. Okay, anyway, so yeah, when you're done with your game, just hit reset and it brings you back into cloud CPM. There's a lot more games for the MSX that haven't been completely ported over to work on the NABU yet. So Lewis has a file which uh, he sent me that includes um, all of the ROM files. Some kind of work, some kind of don't. So what we'll end up doing is we'll put more files on that user 8 drive as we get more of these to work. So you might see some in here like Galaga and stuff, think to yourself, oh my god, I want to play Galaga. Well, they don't fully work yet, so it would be uh, not very much fun to throw them in there. But once uh, Lewis has more of these working, then we'll be able to, uh, to throw them in, such as like Pitfall and all this kind of stuff. So that user 8 folder will grow, and you'll see more of these come in here. wraps it up for this video. I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. Um, I'm sure there's something else I missed because it's been such a crazy busy week uh, developing and optimizing and making things just awesome for you. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.